Hey, how's it going, YouTube? It's Bryant here, and uh, I want to do a unscripted video, uh, sort of like out there, to talk about uh, the change in life from when I left the hospitality industry, and and uh, just like a general overview of how I got into the industry, how um, you know what was it like to work in it, kind of, and basically life before COVID-19 shut everything down. Um, so I, I got my start back when I was in college working part-time. Uh, my father's old manager actually was the one that hooked me up and got me in. I started as a food runner. So I used to work in the kitchen, uh, bringing food from the kitchen to the table. And it was definitely a... Uh, new experience for me. I've never worked in the hospitality industry before. Uh, I remember I my boss once told me to take a mop and mop the floor and I was such an idiot. I, I took the mop and I used the bathroom sink to try to wash it. And he looked at me and was like, what? With the eyes of like, what the fuck are you trying to do? And yeah, so then he was like, took me downstairs by my arm and was like, this is a bucket, this is a mop, this is the water, and this is how you mop the floor. And that was kind of my introduction in. I'll definitely say that uh, overall, I'm really thankful for my experience in hospitality because it really gave me a new mindset, really gave me um, exposure to, to developing a work ethic. Like I remember my friend was like, oh, you, you with a full-time job? <laughs> so, definitely a change so so what, what did that entail i started bringing food you know you would get uh customers and they would sit down they would order food and then the waiter would enter the food order and then there's a ticket that pops out in the kitchen and my job is to bring the food, essentially like the most the primary function is food from kitchen to table then you also had side work like making sure that you know while you went downstairs you you took the old plates down or you made sure that that stuff is tidy and um, you set up some napkins, you set up some supplies for the cooks and stuff. So there's, there's little stuff that you do do on the side, but that's the primary function. And I did that for a bit. And then after a while, I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to be a waiter. And then I was a waiter and then I did that for a while. And then I was fortunate enough to be allowed to learn how to bartend. So then I did waiter and bartending. And then when that restaurant um, ended up closing, the boss and the owners brought me to another restaurant that they owned and operated. And then I worked there ever since as a waiter and then bartender later on. And then uh, one of the executive chefs there had a friend that owned a restaurant and I wanted a management opportunity to, to learn management. So then thankfully because of the reputation I was able to establish myself and the fact that people were loving and supportive of me and my, my willingness to learn in my career, they gave me an opportunity to manage a restaurant. So I, I, I had an ability to move and work up. And when I started to manage at, at the restaurant, I was also working as a waiter slash bartender part-time. So working in two different places and like it's, it, it became almost surreal. Like, like one day I was a waiter or bartender and I was responding to a manager and the other time I was um, managing. And one of the most unique experiences was in the restaurant where I was a waiter, one of my colleagues who was a bartender actually applied to the restaurant that I was working as a manager and I hired him. So like in one place, it's like, hey, we're colleagues. And the other one's like, like, I'm technically your superior. So it was definitely interesting. And then um, did the whole spiel for about two years or so. I moved up in management, became assistant general manager, became a general manager, uh, basically ran the place. Um, and then, and then um, you know, about two years time frame. COVID happened and then all the restaurants got shut down and and then uh that basically stumps that chapter for 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 a bit. 
So this is sort of like a, um, a unscripted, nostalgic run through of my experience in the hospitality industry, things I loved about it, things that I found maybe weird or irritating, and by no means this is in order or organized. So um, one of the topics like people can ask is like, what can you expect to earn in a restaurant, right? Working in different positions. So in the restaurant that I worked at, it's like, it's, it's like a fine dining-ish uh, restaurant where you have uh, different teams and different departments. So typically in a restaurant, what you'll have is front of house and back of the house. So back of the house, you'll, you'll think about things like uh, the dishwasher, the prep cook, the line cook, uh, the chef, the sous chef, the executive chef, and then they handle the food and the cooking. Then you'll have stuff like the front of the house where, the, where you'll have stuff like the bus boy, uh, the food runner, the waiter, the bartender, the manager and the general manager, stuff like that. So um, I got in because I was fortunate enough to have a connection through my father to be, be basically um, come in without experience. And that really, um, I guess was a huge lucky gift or lucky advantage. And then from there, whether or not I got promoted or fired, whatever was dependent on my own performance. When I started um, as a uh, food runner, so we, we get paid two ways. We get paid um, hourly and what's called a tip pool. So hourly we get paid uh, with the tip credit. So we, paid, we, we get paid le less than minimum wage but we don't make less than minimum wage. Well, what does that mean? So like, let's say nowadays, uh, minimum wage is $15 an hour. The, the um, tip credit means that the employer can pay us $10 an hour, and then the rest has to be compensated by uh, the tips that you make from working. So if, if I don't make at least the, what equates to $5 an hour in tip, the employer, whoever is my boss, is legally obligated to pay me that difference. And so let's say I worked work eight hours, that means I make 80 bucks and then everything else in tip like compensates that. So yes, we make less than minimum wage, but we, o we always make at least minimum wage. So let's say that night um, after all the tips from the customers come in, you split it between the bartender, the waiter, the busboy and you, you might make $150 or $200, right? So you get the $80, which is if you assuming you work eight hours, right? You get the 80 bucks plus the 200. So then 80 plus 200 is 280, then 280 divided by um, eight hours works. You know, my math is completely off. I can't do math in my head, but it's like 30 something dollars an hour, $35 an hour, which, which is pretty good. I think in hosp hospitality, when you work at the right type of place and many of my friends like waiters you know you hear them saying oh i made 300 dollars a night in that tip then that, that would be like 300 dollars a night plus the hourly so that's like 380 for the three hours or let's say you make 320 dollars in tips plus the um ten dollars an hour so you made 400 dollars that night assume you worked eight hours then that split that means you made 50 dollars an hour right so that that's the environment in new york city that um that was that that's what it was and the tip pool, pool what that meant was um everyone combined the money that was in tips that night and then you split it equally uh, among people based on their position based on the hours work so you won't have a situation where let's say uh one waiter um brings in a thousand dollars in tip and one person has only but bad customers and so everything's equal right so it's it's like shared so so yes if you have a situation that it's like let's say um someone's lazy and doesn't pull their weight then then that becomes an issue but then that's what management's there for to to decide and do so then after a while uh working there and building my reputation as a food runner and having an interest in this industry i i strive to become a waiter and then so then what does a waiter do it so a waiter means that like if other people need help because it's teamwork right in in this particular restaurant it's pool house everyone works as a team you know i'll help run food i'll help bus tables but my primary function is is essentially to to sell and take care of the guest and we always say guest because that 
you instead of customer because it's like bringing people to your house, right? That's the nature of hospitality. So a guest comes in, they'll sit down. Hey, how are you? Welcome to X, Y, and Z place. How are you doing today? Uh, can I start you with some water, uh, sparkling tap or still water? And then, or whatever the restaurant wants offers. Hey, can I explain the specials today? And then you basically guide them through the menu, explain the food. Uh, do you have any allergies? You know, obviously you don't want to get anyone killed. If there's a peanut allergy, you have to be aware of that. It's stuff like that. Like be, 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 be courteous and be prompt, be efficient. You know, don't give them attitude because at the end of the day, for any business, without the customer or the guest, you have no business. There's no money coming in. Uh, ultimately, the customer is your boss. And in hospitality, and I would say any industry, right? Because if you don't have customers, then you have no money coming in. So then I became a waiter, which, which meant that I would make a higher percentage of the money in the pool than a position like a uh, food runner. So you get like a higher share of the, the tips. And then and then I did that for a bit, loved it, uh, loved interacting with guests, loved catering to them. I loved being able to socialize and stand and walk around and go all over the place. And then, and then um, after I did that, I jumped into being a bartender. So I learned how to make drinks. I learned how to work the bar. You know, you, you do things like set up the bar, well, open it, clean it up you know, set up all the wines and pour and make cocktails and shake them all up and stuff like that. So then you, you make tips from the bar, like all your, all the bar tips, the people that are at the bar, you make the money from the tips from those people. And then because you help make drinks for the rest of the people on the floor, you get a, a share of the percentage of the tips from the floor as well. So, so overall, as let's say my background, my background is Asian American guy i'm a little tubby and i really liked it because like in new york city everyone's very accept accepting and everyone it's a welcoming place it's a melting pot pot so i definitely felt um very welcomed in the industry like my overall experience is very positive and then a after that worked into the other place and then i made the shift into management meant uh later on and management's typically paid like either hourly or salary so, um, in relation, I mean, I went from making more money as a bartender slash waiter than I did as a manager, but as a manager, there are other perks. Like if you want to, like my aspiration, uh, could be to open up my own restaurant one day and, or, or like meet the right people to help investors and so on. So that requires me to move up. Um, but financial, it's a, it's a financial demotion because you don't make as much as a manager well starting off at least like you, you definitely i definitely made less than a waiter i remember like my two days as a waiter working was was like almost the equivalent of me working five days as a manager so like that just gives you like a sense of scale but i definitely benefited in like the position's higher, obviously. You get the prestige, you get the fringe benefits, you get to treat and take care of people, you get to you get to be more involved in the back end operations, the day to day. Um, you get a more authoritative position, you get to hire people, train people, and you get to empower people. Like I, I love the fact that um I could be the boss I wanted to be, I, I wish I had, and I could take that into account when I when I did it. So and I guess keeping the waiter job at the same time, I never lo lost that sense of I'm, I'm also like you kind of like, I never lost the sense of humbleness or the humility of like, Hey, we're all in hospitality together. At the end of the day, we're all working for the guest or we're all working for the owners of the place who are in turn working for the guests because without the guest, the owner can't pay the rent and can't pay the payroll. So, so um, stuff like that. And um, yeah, that's, I guess, a uh, quick intro to the um, unscripted part A of my commentary of um, me having a minor stint in the hospitality industry. Hope to continue and see you guys for the next uh, video.